Coach, how do you think the uh, scrimmage went yesterday? Uh, went well. We protected the football well. Uh, guys, you know, from a missed assignment standpoint, I thought we were pretty clean. Um, we ran the ball effectively, which is one of the things that we had an emphasis on going into the scrimmage. So I thought we did that well. Um, you know, one thing we got to get better at is just playing cleaner, uh, sustaining drives. And our defense, you know, give them credit. They're, they're playing, playing really soft defensively, and they're, they're making us earn every yard. And uh, when you do that, you got to play clean on offense. And um, so we got to just eliminate some of the penalties that we had and continue to, to play cleaner and, and not have any missed assignments. And I think, um, I think we'll be in good shape. How did the quarterbacks look in the scrimmage? Um, all the guys did a good job. Um, we had one interception. Um, was was a long down and distance situation where the ball was thrown a little bit high. Um, but besides that, I thought they protected the ball. They ran the offense very efficiently. Um, I think they understand exactly what we're trying to get done, and, and I can see watching the film that their eyes are in the right places, and then they're distributing the football well. And that's one of the things that we got to do. We got, got good athletes, and um, I don't want the quarterback holding the ball long. I want to get in those other guys' hands so they can make plays. And um, they understand that, and I think uh, all those quarterbacks, not just you know three guys that – most people are talking about, but all the quarterbacks are doing a really good job. How close is the competition? Is, is there anybody that's you know, got a leg off in it? No, I mean, everybody's battling. I mean, um, you know, one, it's you know day-to-day -day deal. And, um, and we're, we're evaluating everything, you know, on and off the field. And um, those guys are, are great young men. They're all very competitive. They understand the situation. You know, there's going to be one guy. Uh, I believe Coach Taggart mentioned earlier that he's going to name a guy before for the opener, so they understand that. And um, but I like the vibe in the room. You know, it's not not a hostile environment. You know, the guys are all wanting to, to get better on a day in day basis and be a great teammate. And um, you know, you do that, you have a chance to be successful. James has been through a lot here in Tallahassee. Do you, do you see a maturity and even a confidence uh, as he evolves here as a yeah, football player? He has been through a lot. Um, you know, he's put in the fire early as. Uh, as a skinny freshman year old, you know, and, uh, and got beat up, you know, got beat up. So those things are, are tough to, to deal with as a as an 18 year old true freshman, um, you know, let alone a fifth year senior. And, uh, you know, y'all know James, you know, James is an unbelievable kid. Love James, his passion, um, his competitiveness, his belief in himself. Um, so James is right where he needs to be and he's, uh, he's hungry and um, he wants to eat. Coach, you've said before that you liked the talent, but you didn't think the depth was where it needed to be a receiver. That's Ideally, right. Ideally, if you're running the number of plays that you'd like and you're in rhythm, how many, how many guys are going to play for you rotation? Um, you know, within drives, you know, we're really not going to do a whole lot of substitution within drives. Um, but you gotta have, you got to have seven, you know, bona fide receivers, dudes that can play for you throughout the course of a year uh, just because you're going to need them. I mean, those guys um, – you know, when you're really, really twitchy, you're going to have some things that they're going to bother you from a soft muscle tissue. You know, it's just the way it is. And we can we can work out all we want, but we ain't going to pull much. But those guys are wound pretty tight, you know. So uh, you got to have them. And uh, I think we've got a good group. I think um, the young guys, uh, the kids that redshirted last year, they've done a really nice job and, it, and added some good depth. So I feel, feel strong about the receiver group right now. When people talk about James, it's always about his leadership and what kind of kid he is. As an actual functioning quarterback, like hand talent, arm talent, how would you assess him? Um, James is, um, you know, the way he plays the game, he plays it a little bit different than everybody else. You know, he, he does have that competitive passion, and he is a great leader. Um, his arm talent is really good. His accuracy is better. Um, so I like that about him. And then he's a good decision maker. Um, and there's been some times when he's been a little loose with the ball, and we've addressed that. Um, and that's, that's, the main, that's the main thing. I tell those guys all the time, the number one ability you can have as a quarterback is predictability. And i got to know where that football should be going. And, um, and he's got to be on the same page as, as us offensively. So um, I think he does have great ability. He's not the best runner in the world. He's not the strongest arm in the world. But when you put everything together, he's, he's a dang good quarterback. You mentioned things need to be instinctual and not so much thinking. Is that something these guys can do in two weeks is make this offense feel instinctual to them? I hope so. We're going to find out. <laughs> What does Alex bring to the quarterback room? Um, Alex is, he, you know, he's a guy who's, he's been through it, you know, he's a vet. Um, and he, he loved having those older guys around. Um, he's seen it, he's played a lot of games. Um, he's, he's gone through the ups and downs of being a starting quarterback, all those things. And then um, I've been really impressed with his knowledge, you know, coming in here and not having the spring that the other guys did and uh, being able to learn and retain. 
Um, he is a he's a really smart kid, as y'all I'm sure you've gotten to meet him. He's um, he's a really smart kid. Whatever he does, he's going to be successful uh, in life in general. And um, and he's got he's got some playmaking ability about him. He runs a little bit better than you'd give him credit. And uh, it's a little different for me having a southpaw out there. You know, I'm not used to that. I gotta I gotta train my brain around him sometimes, but. Uh, uh, I, I like the way he's played the game, and he's done a good job um, with the team. The team really respects him, and and that's tough, you know, coming into an environment where you got a guy like James who everybody loves, and uh, he's worked himself into to everybody really respecting him, and and he's done it by work. That's it, and uh, he's put in the time, and um, I'm really pleased with him and where he's at. Can you take us back to when you first uh, met your offensive guys, and it, do you remember the look on their face when you told them there wouldn't be a playbook? I don't. I don't really recall, honestly. Um, it's not like I know. I know in the media sometimes it's it's kind of a big deal, but uh, I don't really look at it as, as being a big deal as far as not having a playbook. I, I know that that's a little bit unique, um, but it's it's just how we teach the guys, and you know they've. I think our guys are in a good spot. We don't try to make things really difficult. Try to try to simplify, you know, simplify everything for them. Because it's, it's easy as a coach to sit in the office all day and, and dream up a lot of stuff and think that it's all going to be gravy. Um, there's a lot of bullets out there on the field, and those guys got to process a lot of information and, and react uh, because there's, you know, you can say that it's going to be this way, but it, it may not be all the time. So um, we try to teach the guys um, by walking through a lot and by showing them video because, you know, you give a kid a book, you know, he's most likely not going to read it. Most of the kids that we're, we're, we're trying to get to do what we want to do. But if you give them video, you know, that's, you see kids on iPads and phones and watching TV and on Netflix. I mean, they're looking at screens all the time. So that's how we try to teach them. And, um, and then we do it also by, by walking through and, and putting our hands on them and really teaching them what we're wanting to do. So I think our guys have done a great job learning. Are you, are you pleased at how they've adapted? I have, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm pleased with it. And it's always tough. And I mean, you're gonna see things throughout the year where guys may not do right all the time, but when you're playing at a really fast pace, um, there's a lot of things that gotta gotta happen between the snap as far as trying to process the information that's coming out and then react. So, um, but I'm pleased with our guys. Coach, going along with that, the tempo is it where you want it to be, and, and how much more do you need to improve if it's not? Um, we do need to improve. Uh, we're we're gonna be fast, and you know, I'd rather be productive than fast. But we are gonna be fast, and um, our O line. Really, the last uh, three practices, we've done a great job of, of having the time that Coach Tigert's put in the schedule to be able to coach that a little bit better. And, and that's the biggest deal is you got to coach it and you got to work it because it's, it's, it is work. And uh, Coach Clements, obviously, he knows um, exactly what we want up front. And those, those guys are the guys that got to get up and get set the quickest. And a lot of times when you're 340 pounds, you don't really want to work hard between snaps. And uh, so that's, that's, we've had to cattle prod them a little bit, get them going. But I really like where we're at right now. Coach, uh, Coach Taggart talked about, um, you know, how giving up the offensive play calling a lot frees him up a little bit at practice to, you know, work with different groups and just how he's comfortable this year. Um, how comfortable are you within the offense and what's the chemistry like, been like between you and Coach Taggart? Chemistry's been great. Um, and really with the entire offensive staff, our, our GAs, quality controls, everybody, they do a tremendous job. Um, you know, Coach Taggart already had a really good offensive staff here. I was able to step in and um, and be myself, and that's that's all I've been everywhere I've gone. It's just is going and be yourself, and uh, and then get going and make sure we're all you know on the same page, the same mission. And uh, we've got a great staff, and uh, Coach Taggart's allowed us to coach and do our jobs. Does tempo help an offensive line conceal any kind of like deficiencies or anything? What's like the, the main advantage for an offensive line, I guess, when you're running? Absolutely, you can you can hide some weaknesses with tempo. Um, you know, if Marvin Wilson lines up and gets his cleats in the ground and blowing snot bubbles, we're probably not going to block him great all the time. But if we can go sideline to sideline, make the whole defense chase, uh, then you don't get those guys set all the time, and you can come off and take your steps and be able to create some creases, cover some guys up, and then let our backs do the rest. And so that's, you know, that's one of the things we try to do. Coaches, defensive coaches, are always coaching pursuit drill. I mean, you hear it all the time: pursuit of the ball, pursuit of the ball, run the ball, run the ball. We want them to run the ball because we're going to run back to the ball, we're going to line up fast, and now everybody's got to try to get to their position. So, you know, defenses that play really hard, um, a lot of times they'll tie themselves out, and, um, and that's one of the things, you know, that we've developed over the years as far as our tempo. We understand that. So uh, we just got to continue to get better at it. What do you see out of DJ Matthews, and how good can he be in your system? 
DJ's really talented. I, I really like DJ. Uh, <laughs> Duval. <laughs> uh, he's an awesome kid, too. You know, I love high school quarterbacks. Um, anytime you have a high school quarterback that's playing on offense, first of all, the coaches have had to depend on him. Um, and he's had to, the, the team have to depend on him. He's got, had to touch the ball every single snap in high school. So when you have a guy that has that as a background, you know, you feel really comfortable about what he can do and then having the ball in his hands because he's done it, you know, all his life. So uh, he brings a dynamic, I call him kind of silky. He's just got a silky smoothness to him where he, the game kind of slows down for him on the field. Um, he's not, you know, the most blazing fast guy, but he has got so many other goodies that he can, he can put on the field. Um, I think he's going to have a great year. And how do you feel about what you guys have at the running back position this year? It's tremendous, tremendous. Um, those, those three main guys, Anthony, Kalen, and Cam, Cam's one of the best running backs that, that I've ever been around. Um, he is in an awesome spot. He is a tremendous kid. He's a great teammate. Uh, he has worked his butt off the entire summer. Um, and, and Sheffield, who's, who's a kid that is from a little west of here, um, he, he's done a tremendous job too. He was kind of playing receiver and running back in the spring, and we've, he's been focused all on running back. And he's, he had a great scrimmage yesterday, really running physical. And um, and proud of the way he's run. And then we got some other kids that are here that that walked on that are going to be really good backs as well. For the quarterbacks, are you guys in terms of grading them in this competition? Are you charting every throw, or is it something you're everything. judging with your eyes, or just everything? Done? Everything's documented and everything's given to them, and they know exactly where they stand after each practice. Um, so no, there are no secrets, and the film doesn't lie. Anyways, they know. You know, as, as soon as we put on the tape, they know exactly what they did and did or didn't do. Do you, you feel like you and Coach Taggart both appreciate the same stuff in quarterback play when, when you guys are looking at things? Are you guys on the same page in terms of that's what you like and that's what he likes and that's your grading? Yeah, I think, I think any offensive coordinator and their head football coach, they have to be. You know, um, he has the team expectations, and it's my job as offensive coordinator and offensive staff to, to make sure that we have the, the same vision and uh, get the same outcomes. So. Um, yeah, definitely being on the same page and, you know, you want pr productivity. That's what you want and you don't want turnovers. So if a guy can, you know, get in the car and turn it on and click the seatbelt and, and drive straight, then that's what we want. And uh, those guys got to continue to do that on a daily basis. Coach, two questions on tempo. One, compared to last year's offense you saw on video, you are here. Is the tempo going to be even faster this year than last year? I don't know last year. Okay, but well, you saw the video. I mean, the, we, we had some problems getting plays get going, getting the tempo that, that Willie wanted. Right. This year you're getting the plays in because it's more simplified. Yeah, you, you, you see a quick a quicker tempo this year versus video from last year? From, from, to be honest with you, I really didn't watch much video last year. I really did not. Because um, I wanted everybody to be on a clean slate. I didn't want to have prejudgments of guys because to me, it, it didn't matter. You know, you know, I started clean in, in, this, in the spring in January and wanted to judge everybody from what they are right now, not what they've been. Um, but from the other coaches and the players, and especially the defensive guys, just saying um, that it's not even close as far as the tempo. It's faster. It's faster, it's faster, yes, sir. Run plays versus pass plays, which increases the speed of the tempo? Which increases the speed yeah. of the tempo? Which if, you, if you can run, 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 or run, pass, run, pass. Um, if you complete the passes, then it makes it quicker because uh, in complete balls, then you got all the refs, you know, trying to set a ball and half the time they drop it and, you know, try to get set, all that kind of stuff. So obviously if you're running the football, then you can hand it to the official and you can line up and do it again. And same thing if you're completing passes, um, if, if they're, you know, not, not deep balls down the field. So um, to answer that question, I had never thought about it that way, but probably running the football is, uh, is probably a quicker way to get lined up and go. How much does it help? To have a relationship, long-term relationship, which with Coach Clements, it's how huge. much does it help to have the coordinator and the offensive line coach on the same page? It's huge. It's a huge deal. It's um, you know, just understanding, especially with our offense, um, what we do offensively, and you know, a lot of people coin it as RPOs. So, you know, you're talking about running and throwing all together, and so to have a guy who understands exactly, you know, where where we're we're going with the football and what should happen on the play. It's, it's tremendous, and, um, and he does an outstanding job. He's such a positive guy. He's a, he's a brilliant mind. He's a schematic guy as well as far as week to week and changing up. And, um, and the kids love him, you know, because he treats them with respect. And, um, and Coach Clements is a, is a great man. I'm, I'm happy to be, you know, right there coaching with him.
when, when you, I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. He said he <clears throat> treats everyone like an adult and he doesn't do a lot of yelling. Is it, how much does that help with this approach? I think it helps. You know, nobody wants to, uh, to be talked too bad that I've ever been around. Um, uh, I'm not going to say he doesn't do a lot of yelling. He does it, but he just does it in a positive tone. Um, I think you got to yell uh, to, to get your point across at times. Um, but, you know, he's, you know, you can talk to the players, and the players always tell you. But uh, I think everyone respects him and uh, appreciates him being here. You know, when we see, got, we see you guys going to team activities, like usually you're on the sideline signaling in plays, and then Coach Clements is pretty much like a referee in the middle of the field. Is that mm -hmm. because you do have the familiarity that he can be out there pretty much barking out calls to the, to the line in the middle of, of all that chaos? Yeah, and, and furthermore, just they need to see me signaling. Um, I, could, I could be out there and coach the quarterbacks and do all of that and have somebody else signaling, but mannerisms are different. And those guys got to see me signal. They got to get used to that. They got to train themselves to see me and how I do it because that's how it's going to be on game day. Um, and so for me, I think it's, it's just the best thing for the players to be able to see those signals. Wide receivers, you talk about you want seven bona fide you know, dudes out there. How much of a do you need versatility? And do you have that kind of versatility with the guys you have in the, the wide receiver? Court? We do have versatility. And um, you know, it's my job to figure out what their strengths and weaknesses are and then make sure I put them in position to be successful. And not just my job, it's all of our job offensively to do that. Um, but uh, you know, we got some guys that are definitely versatile. And we got some, some skinnier guys that are real fast and sleek. And we got some compact guys that are a little sturdy. So um, it's our job as offense to put them in good position. Is there something about the way guys like Katie and, and Corey were built for you and, and past stops that made them so successful? I mean, around here we think like 6'5", or you know, fans think 6'5 is the way a receiver should be built, but you know, 5'10 can get it done in 170 pounds, it seems like, for you. Yeah, if you can run and catch, then you can get it done. And we'll find a way to, to, to get the ball in your hand and uh, get you in space. Um, because those guys, they make us look smart, <laughs> to be honest with you. I mean, we got to find ways to get them the ball in space and let, let their God-given talent shine. And um, so, yeah, you can do it with, with all different types of players. And we've got, uh, we've got a couple guys to pick from. So I think, uh, I think we'll have some guys that, that you'll see and, and be very explosive. Coach, Coach Taggart's mentioned a few times that, you, that he, one of the things he likes about you is that you have a chip on your shoulder. Is that something that has always been there since you were a competitor? Or where does that come from? Yeah, I think that's just, you know, how I was raised, how I was brought up, that, you know, nothing's given to you, everything's earned. And, um, you know, when I was a young kid, I was, you know, uh, in a town that was kind of a one-horse town, and uh, I was always a quarterback. And so anytime you're a quarterback, you got everybody looking at you, not to do right, but to do wrong. And so all my life, you know, it's just, it's how I've been. And uh, um, I've carried that throughout throughout where I am now, 36 years old, my kids will have that same chip on the shoulder. We're not not ever going to take anything anything for granted and um, always gracious of everything that we have and we're going to work. Did, it, did that excite you about this challenge? I mean, not that you're focused on the past, but obviously Florida State's been struggling the last year or two offensively. Did that excite, like, does that challenge get you going a little bit? I wouldn't say the challenge. Um, you know, when I started looking at it, I would think that, you know, one of the things was that's not Florida State, you know, and I, you know, have a chance to help it. And um, I looked, you know, went back and looked through all the stats and how they were offensively. And then, you know, I watched one game. I watched a Virginia Tech game. That was, I think, a Monday night game. And I was, I was at home that evening. And I got a chance to see that. And um, I, I didn't think that it was right. Then I don't know how many we ended up scoring. But wasn't, wasn't scoring and wasn't, wasn't being dynamic on offense like, you know, all of us have seen. I mean, I'm a Texas guy, but Florida State's on the field. They're usually throwing up some numbers and doing some great things. So. Um, you know, if I have a chance to come over here and help Coach Taggart get the program back where it needs to be, I thought that thought was a good move. When Coach Taggart was at USF, he visited Baylor. Mm -hmm. Is that when your relationship started to develop? Yeah, it was the first time I met Coach Taggart. He came and, and was there uh, maybe 36 hours. I, I remember him coming into our office and staff room and, and uh, you know, talking. And then we put him back there and gave him some tape and let him go to work. And then they were at practice and saw how we practiced. So um, I think he was making a couple stops that spring trying to, to change from the uh, heavy formation, eye formation, run game to a spread. And uh, that was the first time I was around him. As you get closer to that first game, does the way you sort of evaluate the quarterbacks change? Is there anything that gains greater emphasis for you as you look through the film and see what they're doing? Just protecting the football. And that's been the number one thing we've talked about, protecting the football. You know, we, I mean, that's the most precious thing in the world. And there's 22 people on the field trying to get it. And you do not give it up. Um, 
things are going to happen, understand that, but we've got to be incredibly smart with the football. So that's been the number one thing. Coach, Coach Clement spent a year at Southeastern in Lakeland. <laughs> yeah. What does it say about him that he was willing to spend a year at an NAIA school? All I did was lead America in offense that year um, on that level. So uh, they did a good job. And uh, I mean, y'all have, have talked to Clem. Coach Clem, he's an he's a awesome individual. Great, great person, great man, and uh, he's a, he's a heck of a football coach. So he's he's going to be successful wherever he has. And if you if you really look at what he's done offensively from a run game standpoint, um, it's probably just under 300 yards a game uh, where he's been in the collegiate level. I would I would guess. I, I'm saying it's over 250. So he understands how to run the football. So I'm glad he's on our side. Coach, uh, I'm coming from Orlando. We cover a lot of UCF. Do you, Coach Levy? Talk, talk every talk. minute of every day. Yeah, like yeah. What kind of shop do you guys talk? Do you, do you share stuff? Do you share game planning? Because UCF runs that kind of tempo. Yeah, they do. Um, I mean, he's my brother-in-law, obviously. I mean, I've known the guy since since I was born and he was born. So I've known him my entire life, literally. And uh, yeah, we talk we talk about everything all the time. And if there is something that that he's getting after the defense with, then you know I'll ask him about it. We'll send video through iPhone. Same with us. You know, we we share information. And um, they've done a tremendous job down there. Coach Heupel's done a great job. So they've got that thing rolling. I think they got that, that conference in a headlock right now. All right, so who's UCF's starting quarterback? <laughs> don't ask me those questions. <laughs> they go, go down the road and ask those guys. I don't know. I'm not in that building. All right, thank you, Coach. Good? Thanks, thank you, Coach. Thank you, Coach. Good luck.